Welcome back guys to another amazing episode of Christianity over Islam with some shaman. This time around some shaman is teaching people how to destroy this argument of uh, Muslims and atheists on Old Testament slavery. Let's watch this amazing tweet. Now why are you wasting your time justifying slavery to Muslims who are supposed to believe that the entirety of the Bible is the uncorrupt word of God because Muhammad said the scriptures of the Jews and Christians are God's uncorrupt words preserved that they are to rule by and the Quran says that Jesus confirmed the Old Testament between his hands so if the Bible is evil that means they just said Muhammad is a dog who doesn't know what he's talking about and the Muslims are the, are the last ones to be talking about slavery yeah exactly but why are you defending Muhammad defended the Bible for you so why are you wasting your time yeah, I guess that I actually, now that I think about it, I mostly hear this from unbelievers, not... Okay, believers. well, secondly, that's what I'm going to go to the unbelievers. When an unbeliever who doesn't believe in God, right? Yes. Morally, morally justify your assertion that slavery is evil, objectively. When an unbeliever who doesn't believe in God tells me slavery is evil, I say, on what basis, what grounds? How do you know that slavery is morally, objectively wrong? Perfect. Yeah, I can bear Why it. are you, see... Again, learn from Jesus. You are dealing with a symptom. Symptom. I'm going to the root, the root problem. I'm cutting off the cancer because when I cut off the cancer, the symptoms disappear. You want to deal with the symptom. I'm going to the root. When an atheist agnostic tells me slavery is wrong, I say, on what grounds objectively do you condemn slavery? What is your moral standard? Boom. What yep. is your standard of objective moral absolutes to tell me that this is objectively morally wrong? I should have thought of that. Thank you. Okay, um, so this is how I answer the Muslim, and this mm -hmm. is how I answer. This is how I answer the unbeliever. Now, for the Christian who loves the Lord and knows the Bible is God's word, and he wants an answer, well, then I will address him. Number one. If you read the Old Testament carefully, I did a session on it with Adam Seeker. It's there. You're going to have to find it. Old Testament law, Adam Seeker on my channel. You have laws for Hebrew servants, and then you have laws for enslaving the nations. A Hebrew servant could only serve for a period of time and have to be set free, right? That's in Leviticus 25 and so on. Whereas you could enslave the nations indefinitely. Why the difference? You want to now go into the logic? Remember when you see God with an open heart and ask God and say, Lord, I know you're infinitely wise and you're good and pure. And I know that whatever you do is good and there's a reason. I may not understand it, but I know your character. I know you cannot be evil. So I'm going to wait patiently to understand. And in time, he'll reward you. So now let me show you the wisdom of God. When Israel's at war, let's say, and they enslave nations. Okay, now let me show you the wisdom of God. Why is it a Gentile could be enslaved indefinitely? Now watch it from God's perspective. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. The nations that are being enslaved are those who engage in infanticide, murdering children, bestiality. You'll find in Leviticus 18, Leviticus 20, the list. Leviticus 18, Leviticus 20. Infanticide, meaning murdering children, bestiality, incest, right? <clears throat> Idolatry, homosexuality, lesbianism. When God's people enslave them, that becomes a moral deterrent. They're now under your control, and they cannot carry out those sins anymore, those vices anymore. So it's twofold. Punishment on them for their sin, and a moral restraint where you now prevent this spiritual cancer from spreading and harming others. You catch it now? Yeah. Now, what if that Gentile converts and says, I recant and repent of my ways. I don't want to worship the gods, and I want to worship the God of Israel and honors commands then that person is now given the status of an Israelite he is to be loved as a fellow Israelite and he cannot be discriminated against and he must be brought into the Commonwealth of Israel now let me show you that are you ready Wow yeah please go to Deuteronomy chapter 10 verses 18 to 19 right, so you understand that's I answer this for a Christian I don't answer it for unbelievers. I don't waste my time. You see, you guys are seeing the difference, right? It's not I don't have the answer. God in his mercy rewarded me with the wisdom to know this. And I didn't hear this from someone. I just thought about it. Glory to the Spirit. So if a Christian asks me, I'll answer him. An atheist asks me, I'll say, go to hell, book your ticket, and go to the Valley of Hinnom. And a Muslim answers me, I say, thank you for praying Muhammad is a, is a dog. And he is for other reasons. Go to Deuteronomy 10, 18 to 19. 
10, 18 to 19. Okay. You guys are understanding now God's wisdom, right? Why? He's now preventing the cancer of spreading. We're now no more infanticide, no more children being killed as a sacrifice to the gods and goddesses. No more lesbianism, no more homosexuality, no more incest, no more bestiality, sleeping with animals. None of that because they're under Israel's control and they can't do that. But what if they repent? Now watch what happens if they repent. Deuteronomy 10, 18 to 19. He accomplishes judgment for the orphan and the widow. He loves the sojourner and he gives him food as well as clothing. Therefore, you also should love sojourners. Sojourners means a stranger, the non-Israelite who lives among you. Gotcha. It's not a sojourner. I'm sojourning. I'm a stranger. He says, see, it's saying God loves the stranger, the sojourner, the alien. Therefore, you are to love the stranger who lives in your midst, who's not an Israelite. Reread that. Read it uh, from 18. Yeah, 18, 19, slowly, because your translation is making hard for you to follow. Sojourner yeah, means the Catholic stranger. Catholic translation. Do you want me to what just translate one? The Catholic. Yeah, you read a translation and understand at first, and then you work your way up to the more literal translation. So if you're not understanding translation, it defeats the purpose. Deuteronomy 10, 18 to 19. All right. He accomplishes judgment for the orphan and the widow. He loves the sojourner and he gives him That's food. Sauce. You're thinking of Chinese food, sojourner. So, sojourner. Sojourner. Sojourner means a stranger, an alien sojourner. in your land. Yeah, like an illegal alien. Sojourner, someone who's on a journey who sojourns. Sojourner, like Muhammad's journey to hell when he died? Yes, okay. but he's not a sojourner, he belongs there. That's a difference. Oh, oh okay, great. Go from, gotcha. Um, <clears throat> he loved the sojourner and he gives him food as well as clothing. Therefore, you also should love sojourners, for you also were new arrivals in the land of Egypt. All right, guys, and from this uh, side we have watched so far, some shaman is trying to teach in this man rather on how to reply most uh, Muslim questions and uh, um, the atheist who does not believe in God. You know, most Muslims, they always try to ask these questions about this slavery in the Bible and the rest. So, he is now trying to tell them that each time any Muslim asks you such a question, the best way to silence them is that Muhammad says in the Quran that the Bible, which is the word of God, is uncorrupted. It's, can, it can never be corrupted. There is nothing you can do that can make the Bible to be corrupted. And so, if by that uh, by that stand that the Bible cannot be corrupted, it means that the argument they are bringing is that has no basics. And if the Bible can be corrupted, then Muhammad saying in the Quran that the Bible cannot be corrupted is lying. I don't know if you understand. Then the issue of atheist own, he said that um, mostly he doesn't answer them. He just ignore and then. He get them to go to hell and all that. Um, then he will ask then this one very important question that how did you know or on what moral ground that slavery is wrong? If they are unable to answer that question then you have this answer. And then uh, he said talked about the issues of Hebrews and slaves that if you are a Hebrew and you are a slave that uh, you, there is a certain time frame that you can serve for a period of time then you will be set free and it gives the reason why israel keeps people as slaves whenever they conquer a nation let's continue with this video to get more details so you see what god is saying i love the stranger the alien and i feed them therefore you must love the stranger and alien because you were strangers in egypt and i delivered you so how are the israelites to treat a non-Israelite who's a sojourner, a stranger, an alien who lives in the land? Uh, like Israelites. You got it. Yeah. Now go to Leviticus 19, 33 to 34. Leviticus 19. 19, 33 to 34. 19, 33 to 34. I'm going to switch to King James just so we're on the same page here. And do what you got to do. The king ain't on, the king ain't in it. But go ahead. 19, even though it's the Protestant Bible. But it's yeah. okay. Leviticus 19, um, 33 30. to 34. 32, okay. 33 to 34, what 32? <clears throat> what a law. <laughs> and if a stranger, again with this sojourner word that I can't pronounce, and English is my first and only language, and if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him, 
but the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as the one born among you. So he's going to be like an Israelite. How are you to treat him? Just like he was born among you. As your so a stranger who's not ethnically Israelite, but he lives among you because he wants to worship your God. You are not to discriminate. You are to view him as a native born Israelite as one of your own equal. Keep reading. Um, but the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be uh, unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Mm. Night, night. So, using the New Indian version, because even that was hard for you. When a foreigner resides among you in your land, Leviticus 19, 33, 34. When a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself, for you are foreigners in Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Now, do you guys see how fair, beautiful, impartial the true God is? Even in the Old Testament, he's showing you he doesn't show partiality to the Jews and opposes the nations. He tells the Jews, if a Gentile comes and he wants to live in the land because he wants to worship me, he is now to be considered an Israelite. Did you catch where the New Testament got the principle? That if you belong to Christ, you are a true Israelite because it was already established in the Old Testament. So now let me ask you, if now this Gentile converts and gives his life to the God of Israel, and now he has the status of an Israelite, he's now an equal. That means the law of servitude would be applied to him. And Hebrew servants could not serve indefinitely in the seventh year or in the Jubilee year, they'd be set free. I see. So you understand now why the justice and enslaving the nations, did everyone understand the justice, the wisdom? These nations are sacrificing children to gods and goddesses. They are committing bestiality, they're sleeping with animals, which they still do today, sadly, even in America, but in the Middle East. It's, it's I'm not lying. It's in Leviticus 18 to Leviticus 20. It says, do not sleep with an animal because both you and the animal will be put to death because you defiled the animal. Bestiality, incest, sleeping with siblings and parents and children. Homosexuality, lesbianism, all of this. And when you now enslave them, they can't do that anymore, can they? They can't do that anymore, can they? Amen. Right? So now, notice, it's judgment on them for their sin. And secondly, it becomes an act of mercy because it becomes a moral deterrent. What do I mean? You now prevent this evil sin from spreading like cancer and gangrene. You now prevent children from being violated, animals from being violated, homosexuality, lesbianism, and idolatry. And if they then end up converting and giving their life to the God of Israel, they are now considered Israelites. And now the full status of an Israelite is given to them in the same rights. So this is God's way of destroying the sin from spreading, protecting innocent lives, and being a moral deterrent as well, a moral incentive to get them to convert change our ways and worship the God of Israel and therefore be given equal status. Did you understand now? I did. Thank you. I hope that answered your question. I don't know if it did. I did. Absolutely. Thank you. I mean, it, it's just pushed back on the non-believer for their yeah. lack of moral standard. And then the Muslims confirm the Bible. So yes, what sir. do they have to say about it? That's why I don't waste my time. When an agnostic yeah. says, I go, sucks being you. What do you mean? Yeah. You don't like slavery? Sucks being you. That's a personal problem. Why is slavery objectively morally wrong? You don't have a moral objective standard. You don't have objective moral absolute. So how do you know this is wrong? I mean, aren't you speaking out of both sides of your mouth? First, atheists want to tell us there are no moral absolutes. More moral, ethical standards are a social construct in order to help us survive. And then they'll tell you, certain atheists will say, well, your brain is already wired, pre-programmed, <clears throat> in such a way that you have no choice but to do what your brain tells you to do. Did you know that, guys? There's actually mm -hmm. atheists who say you don't have free will. They're like Calvinists, but the opposite. They're atheists. They'll say your brain already determines what you do. Everything you do is chemical reactions. It's brain activity, neurons discharging, so it has nothing to do with choice. You're programmed to do what you want. So then if you're an atheist, your brain programs you to do what you do. And since you're an atheist, there are no moral absolutes. So why are you talking about something being morally wrong or right? Right?
because that by that standard, then Nazi Germany, those people that lived in that society had all the right to have their moral standard. No, that's right. It, they will tell you the honest, consistent atheists. I'm not lying. Search it. They'll tell you, yes. Yes. At the end of the day, there are no moral absolutes. It's simply brain chemical reactions because we are bags of molecules. They won't say it that way, but we are simply chemicals, right? brain discharges causing us to feel a certain way act a certain way but there are no moral absolutes but it's just conducive for the preservation of the human race that we act a certain way but you say then why who cares if we survive you get my point they'll say Absolutely. it's conducive to set up a moral ethical system to prolong prolong human life for as long as possible but you say why why is it conducive what makes human life more valuable than the life of a rat or a cat or a roach or a dog? Because if evolution is true and there is no God, all we are are a more evolved species, right? Animals who just have a higher intellectual capacity and we want to survive. But who cares whether we want to survive or right? Because survival, wanting to survive is not a moral duty or an obligation. Even... Even animals want to survive, but we still put them to death. And when a lion preys on another victim and kills the victim, the victim doesn't want to die, but we don't say the lion is evil. We're going to punish the, uh, the, the lion. That makes no sense, right? Mm -hmm. But why? We're all just animals, right? So shouldn't That's we punish the lion lock him up? That's why I don't entertain the atheists. Have them defend the claim that this is evil. What's the grounds for your assertion? Mm-hmm. Yep. What's the grounds for claiming slavery is evil in your worldview? There are no moral absolutes. Because by my standard, they're killing babies. They kill a million babies in the United States every every year. Exactly. But so. to the atheist, he'll tell you that's pro-choice. No. That's the woman's reproductive rights. Right. That's what the liberals and atheist agnostic tell you. It's her body. So she can choose to abort that human life or not. It's her body. It's her reproductive rights. But then you say... Who gave her those reproductive rights? Mm -hmm. They'll say, well, in this society. But what if another society takes over and says that killing unborn children is evil? Would they be right? Well, according to you, you have no standard to say this is right or this is more right. See, that's why you don't entertain them, dude. All right, guys. Thank you for watching this amazing uh, video. I think um, this guy acting on Shaman. He's a Christian and then... Uh, He's trying to get more facts from Sam Shaman on how to go about answering most of the Muslims and uh, faithful and uh, atheists who comes to him to ask him about slavery in the Bible. And then he, first of all, he answered him um, by saying that uh, Muhammad says in the Quran that the Bible is the word of God. Is uncorrupted word of God that it cannot be corrupted, and so by by that, if Muslims come up with uh, with their own belief that the the Bible has been corrupted over the years, it means that Muhammad has lied because he says in the Quran that uh, the Bible cannot be corrupted, and also the issue of atheists who say who talks uh, who asks this kind of question, he said that you can ask them that how do they know. Or what moral ground that uh, slavery is wrong? Because most atheists believe that there are no moral standards, there are no moral uh, absolutes, that the brain has been programmed in such a way to react because of the chemical reactions. So by saying that if the brain has been programmed, has been programmed to react in a certain way, it means that everyone has the free will, the free right to do whatever they they, they want to do so which means their own argument cannot hold i don't know if you understand and then he answered them on from the, the book of deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 18 to 19 where he says um, that if an israelite who is a slave among the israelites then there is a specific time frame for the person to serve as a slave then the person is set free and also if the person is being captured and the main reason why the Israelites keep slaves most of the time is that some of the nations around them 
they commit and bestiality they sleep with animal and their incest brothers and sisters sleeping with each other and they sacrifice children to their idols so when israel are captured they, they bring them under their control teach them their way their culture and until they be once they, they repent they change their way and they want to worship the god of israel then they are being set free and they are considered as israelites and whether them be israelites or not at the time the law given to them was that they should love the sojourners the slaves as themselves guys i believe you have watched this amazing debate and i mean this amazing discussion by some shaman and this young man let us know what you think drop your comment in the comment section thank you for watching our videos and don't forget to like to subscribe to our channels for more videos thank you